Well, at one point you actually went back and forth with Iggy Azalea over <laughs> yeah. uh, Macklemore's white privilege too. Yeah. Well, what's your take on Iggy Azalea these days? <clears throat> I don't know what she's doing this, these days. What do Iggy Azalea be doing these days? I don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, you should, <laughs> Iggy Azalea. Um, you don't come for the OGs. You don't. You don't come for the OGs. You don't come for Q-Tip. You come for Q-Tip. I come for you. You come for Common. I come for you. You come for Chuck D, I come for you. You know, that's how it go. Um, because I feel like I'm, I've am i earned my position as a curator and a protector of this culture. I give a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to this culture, and this culture has given me so much. So when I'm in a position where people look at my voice as a voice of respect, if I see someone who I respect being disrespected, I have to say something. And um, look, Iggy Azalea, bro, like... When she first came out, I was a I was a fan. I'm not gonna say I was a fan, but I was rooting for her. She had a couple of records that I liked. I wasn't mad uh, at her, you know, for for anything. I I was okay. A young girl from Australia, get it. Go ahead, Ti Sander. He must see something that we don't see. You know that the world don't see yet. Let's go. I used to DJ at Beauty and Essex a lot. I used to play her initial records. I don't really remember the names of them. But even when, all the way up until when Fancy dropped, I wasn't mad at Fancy. Like Fancy was a pop record. It was more pop than hip hop to me, but I liked it as a record. People said she sounded like she was down south. Yeah, she did, but that's not something that bothered me. I didn't, I didn't. That, that didn't bother you? The fact that she had a fake accent all the way through no, it all didn't, the records? No, it didn't bother me because I'm not putting her in the class of real MC at all. You know, I don't have a problem with pop artists. I don't. I don't have a problem with pop. You know, like, I, I don't. Like, you have to do something really wrong for me to have an issue with that. Is it cultural appropriation? Sure it is. Sure it's cultural appropriation. But is it the worst example? There's worse examples. And I'm not going to get myself in a tizzy over some white artist just because. Like, I, I have other shit to focus on. So, I, I really wasn't, I wasn't offended by Iggy Azalea. I recognized it for what it is. I was like, yeah, that's cultural appropriation. Yeah, it's kind of funny that she got a fake accent. I thought it was kind of funny. But it wasn't something that bothered me. It wasn't something that made me feel a way like, fuck, Iggy it, 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 it. I didn't feel that way. Um, I, Cause I, I'm an artist and artists, I give artists a chance. Look, when, when, when Shine came out, he sounded like big, everybody was upset. Remember how upset everybody? Now Shine is doing the Bad Boy tour from Belize and no one's mad. Shine had hit records out sounding like big. No one gave a shit. Well, I think Shine initially sounded like Big, but I think by the time the first album came out, he sort of developed his own sound. Well, with all respect uh, to Shine, he always sounded like Big, but he just was making good records. That's what it was. He was. It got to the point where it was like, yeah, okay, you sound like Big, but I, I can't front. I like I like that song. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not mad at someone up, taking this. I, I, that, none of that bothered me. I saw some of the tweets that she had. She had said she had some questionable tweets that showed some of her bigotry. I didn't like that. There was some questionable tweets about like, there was some, some, some xenophobic bigotry tweets. Maybe that didn't say nigger, but that were like, I think it was some, 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 some shit about Chinese people. Just some, she's a young girl. Like, a lot of young people put out xenophobic, bigot, bigoted tweets thinking they're being funny. You know what I'm saying? Trevor Noah from The Daily Show. When he first got on, people went to his old tweets from when he was 20, 21, and he had some questionable jokes that people was like, are these racist, are they offensive? So when you're a young person, but did that put her on my radar. Like those tweets put her on my radar, like, okay, she might not be woke. Like she might not have no real knowledge herself. She might not really know what's going on with culture. When, then I saw the, the tape with her shit, with the Kendrick verse. Now I saw something where she said Kendrick gave her her blessing, whatever, that's cool, he could do that. I, I from what I saw, she kicked somebody else's verse and did not tip the crowd off to let them know it was somebody else's verse. I thought that was corny. Right, I remember that. I thought that was corny. Um, the Azalea Banks thing, her beef with Azalea Banks. I don't agree with a lot of uh, Azalea Banks says or does at all, but you gotta check your privilege when you're talking to a person of color about race. And the way that Iggy Azalea came at, at Azalea Banks, whether Azalea Banks started it or not is irrelevant to me because you have to you have to be cognizant of race relations in the states. You're going to talk to a young black girl who grew up in Washington Heights, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to know what you're saying. You got you got to be able to represent yourself in a way where you could defend yourself without throwing throwing shade at a race of people. And she was not able to do that. And Q-Tip spoke to her about it. 
and she didn't respond to Q-tip. I took that as disrespect. Um, so she was on my radar as, as I just don't fuck with her. I went on tour with Macklemore. Macklemore is somebody who has, to me, done the best job he can to show solidarity with people of color, to show solidarity with the movement, and to, most importantly, be silent, listen, and talk to other white people about what white people should be doing to come combat injustice. He's not, he doesn't try to white splain. He doesn't try to say black on black crime. He doesn't try to say this with white black people. He doesn't try to pretend that the pain of black people is an illusion. He has enough intelligence and compassion to sit back and be like, I'm gonna listen to what you have to say and I'm gonna try to do my part and I'm gonna speak to other people like me. And white privilege too. He did that before he was famous. So he, when he became famous, he felt the need to do a second part. That's what white privilege too is. And when Iggy Azalea, the only thing that she could say to that is to, to, to sort of accuse him of dissing her. When one, he didn't diss her at all. She completely misread the lyric. That just set me over the top. And I, that, I had to say something at that point. I'm like, you're stealing from Kendrick. You're dissing Q-tip. And now you have an opportunity to show solidarity with people of color. Like you out here with this black boyfriend talking about you're going to have black babies. But you don't got nothing to say about police accountability. You don't got nothing to say about the injustices in America. The only time you speak up is when someone says something personal that you take personal about Iggy Azalea. Like they, that's the only time you got something to say when it's to, to defend yourself against an insult that you invented in your head. Hmm. I have an issue with that. Like, like, and I've, I, I, you know, my bias is when you come from someone I know personally, I take it a little bit more personal. So when she came from Mac, Mac Lamore, I know what he's given of himself to try to open up the discussion. And here you are trying to shut the discussion down when you have offered nothing. You've offered nothing. And you're trying to shut it down because you misinterpreted his mention of your name as a diss. That's some straight bullshit.